Another thing that gives me the heebie-jeebies when I'm building a locomotive is this flared cowling which always goes over the chimney. Now the chimney was made from a piece of brass uh, pipe connector that I bought at uh, Home Despot or Home Depot. And that was, um, that was machined on my lathe with a slight taper, it's to the drawings. But then I had to put this flare on it here. And I made this flare out of copper. Pretty pleased with it, it fits nice and neatly on the, ch on the smoke box top. The way I made this was using a, um, a length of half inch, ordinary half inch copper tubing. I cut it to length. Now this, the diameter was slightly smaller than the diameter if I can get this off here without too much trouble. That was actually pretty good. That's what I wanted. So to make that flared end to the chimney, I took my piece of copper tubing, placed it on a mandrel, which is a um, carbon st piece of carbon steel rod, which had been machined down here for another job, but uh, it was uh, the good diameter. And then with a small hammer, I would uh, I, 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 I tap this round and round. Now, I annealed this um, in the propane torch many, many times during this process, made it soft. As I, as I uh, tapped it round, I made it thinner, and making it thinner, it then slid up the side of the chimney and became the chimney's diameter. What I was careful to do is not hit it too hard each time because I didn't want to put a big dent in it and also to keep it fairly round. Then when I'd got that right and it slipped up the chimney, I then bent it up here like this and put the, put the flare in. Once I'd got a flare in it into this piece of copper, and you can see now it's quite thin compared with the half inch copper piping I'd, been, I'd originated it from. I placed it on the smoke box and then with a rawhide mallet very very carefully beat down on the top of it here so that it formed into that strange convolution of curves which makes the flare at the bottom of the chimney as you can see here. And then I smoothed it off with a, uh, with, a, with a file to get all the final little kinks out of it from the hammer beating. Made sure this fitted the chimney here. That was about an hour's work, and I think it looks pretty good. That's another job completed. One of the uh, continual brain teasers with building a steam engine this small is of course fitting everything in under the uh, form factor of the steam engine and making it still look um, reasonably like the prototype. And um, I have struggled a little bit with this back end here. Um, I've now got the, uh, the the rare bogey, seems to be finished, it clips in there. I'll show you that in a bit more detail later. And I've got these side control springs here, and they rest against the, um, the inner edges of the frame. This clips in here, and then controls, allows, as it enters a curve, it pushes the frames around before the, um, the, uh, the rare driving wheels hit the frame. Now I have it quite successfully at the front, but the problem here was that the the bracket I'd put the oh, let's get a little closer the bracket I'd put the uh, the slider on which is two springs for the side control is a little bit too narrow and what happens is it jams because then the hole it jams in the hole and of course the side thrust as well so what I have to do is take this little brass piece off here and make a longer brass piece so it gives it a better pivot, well, a better hole, which isn't going to jam because of the, um, the, uh, the, the narrowness of this hole against the long shaft. Even with lubrication, it, it feels sticky, it jams. You can see that there when I'm trying to move it with my fingers, and it'll do that to the engine as it's going along the tracks. So I'm going to remachine this and make it so that it fits properly. You're still retaining this shaft here. Another thing that's just been completed is the um, is the ash pan, which is here. A uh, bit of a bit of a squeeze. Uh, first of all, I made it out of uh, cardboard. It's got to squeeze in, up and in there between the boiler and this uh, frame stretcher here, avoiding the front wheels, but at the same time allowing air to get in and underneath and into the onto the grate. So from that, 
I produce this, which is a bit sort of airy, airy fairy, it looks like. Now, I've had to uh, bend these out to allow the air in. I've had to dent these in to allow the flanges of the wheels room to pass. Uh, these little tabs here of supporting the grate, whether they're strong enough or not, I don't know. I'll find out when I get it into service. But this slides in here, and it's held just by um, you know, by the squeeze between the bottom of the firebox and this frame stretcher. It's that's going to work okay. The rear bogey uh, fits in here like this, and I have a spring pin which goes through a hole in the um, shaft here to retain the bogey I'm not going to push it all the way in goes that in there, retains the bogey but it's very easy to remove pull out, take the bogey off and pull the uh, ash pan off to the side and down and empty the ash pan the other, the other um, we'll see how it happens in, um, in operation but um, this might be a little shallow depending on what coal I use I'll see, I'll, I'll get it up and running before I make a final decision on that. If it is too shallow, I'm going to have to then alter this beam here, which means altering the way the bogey's fitted on, but hopefully that's not going to be the case.